Today's video, I am going to show you how to make fly tying dubbing. Um, I buy a lot of dubbing and I, I make a lot of dubbing and I like the stuff I make better most of the time because I can customize it. Now I do get this UV dubbing. I really like it. Um, it's a crystal dubbing. It works really well and I add a lot of that in with some of my other dubbing. And then here's a box that I've made. This is all just basically rabbit fur and I've dyed all the rabbit pelts myself. And basically what I do is I get these little containers, little tackle containers, and I get a quarter inch drill, quarter inch drill bit, I'm sorry. And I just drill a hole. You gotta go nice and slow. And the slower you go, the smoother that gets. And these boxes are kind of brittle, but you just basically drill a hole in the bottom side of these boxes. And once you get them holes drilled, I've got one I've already drilled. You guys don't need to sit and watch me drill a bunch of holes. Once you get them holes drilled, all I do is open it up and get it ready for my different colors I'm gonna make. Today, I am going to show you guys, I'm gonna make a bulk kit of a blend, and then I'm gonna make a box of, I'm gonna make a bunch of UV stuff. So basically, I get rabbit pelts and I get them in different shapes, colors, sizes. You can get them at your little farm stores, leather craft shops, um, craft stores. Uh, if you know a taxidermist or a hunter, you can come up with them. Um, possums, rabbits, the like the under fur on raccoons, foxes, any any animal that has fur is gonna make good dubbing. And what I do is I take, and I have a pair of hair cutters. Now, these work pretty good, but if you get real serious about it, you wanna use a set that's designed for pets. And if you use a set that's designed for pets, they actually can cut a little bit smoother, but these work fine. And if you don't want to invest in a pair of these, um, use a pair of scissors and you can go real fine. So basically all I'm gonna do is turn these things on and push through the hair. And as I'm cutting it, you kind of need to give it a little bit of pressure and go kind of slow when you're using cutters that are made for, for people's hair and not pet hair. But they work just fine. Um, so I go through and I cut a little bit like that. You can also take your scissors and you can come through and just cut it right at the base. It's probably not that much slower. And as you cut this, kind of get enough for what you're wanting to do. Now you can dye this and make whatever colors you want. And a little does go a long way. Um, and I can show you guys in a, the next video I'm going to do um, tomorrow, I'll actually show you guys a lot of dyeing techniques. And you can go buy uh, material dye in the craft store. Um, I've seen people buy kits that they use for tie dyeing. Um, you can use Kool-Aid. Gosh, I'm getting rabbit air everywhere. You can use Kool-Aid. Um, and the trick is setting it with vinegar. But anyhow, you can dye it all different colors. Or what I'm doing right here is I'm going to make me a box of synthetic blend. And what you need is just a cheap little coffee grinder. And I actually purchased this one today because I burnt my old one up. I used it so much. And basically, all you do is put it in there and pulse it. And that is going to whip it really, really, uh, I, I mean, fluffy as can be. Now, this is going to be great for dubbing loops. If you want to make it where it's not for dubbing loops, all you need to do is pick up the fibers and start cutting them smaller. But when you make dubbing loops, and you, you know, this is going to be for dubbing loops. This is going to be a dry fly box. But if you just cut it smaller like that, 
it, it will work fine. And now being I've cut them smaller, I'm going to add that back in there. So with my kit, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and dig some of this out and it sticks to everything. It's got static electricity to it, so it's it's a little bit comical trying to catch it. And as I get it, I'm gonna poke it into one of these little containers that I've already made. So now, I wanna add a little color to it, and I wanna make it where I'm having a synthetic blend. So what I've done is I've just got some cheap yarn. This is a tweed yarn, it's 100% acrylic, which makes a really good blend with rabbit hair. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this and I'm going to loop it over my hands a few times. As I loop it over my hands a few times, then I'm going to just cut the little pieces. And I want to cut these pieces somewhere in the area of a quarter inch to a half an inch long. Now I just added a few. I didn't put a whole lot in there because I don't want to make it completely dark at once. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put that in there and pulsate it. Don't have to do it very much. And as you can see, this is just a little bit darker than the last one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that in the box next to it. Just a little bit of it. So now I've got a shade that's a little bit darker and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to cut little bitty pieces, not a whole lot at once, and add just a little bit. Put the lid back on. And you don't want to just keep running it, you want to pulsate it. So now, I have a mix that's just a little bit darker than my first mix. So I'm going to pinch off a little piece and put it in the box. So now I have three different shades and rabbit hair in my mouth. Ugh, I don't like getting a hairball. I'm going to cut just a little bit more. getting a little bit darker poke it in the box now I'm going to continue doing this and little by little I'm going to add a darker color to it so that is going to be a quite a bit of brown in there so now I have some that's a little bit darker so now I'm going to get some black yarn we're going to do the same thing if I can find the dang end of it and I guess it doesn't matter because I'm making dubbing at all of it so I'll just cut some off now black you got to kind of be conservative with because black really really goes a long way really really quick so what we're going to do now is we're just going to cut a little bit of black there's probably eight half inch pieces in this right now so we're going to pulsate it and the black starts to turn this brown to a little bit of a grayish brown so then we're gonna add just a little bit more and we're gonna do this a few times I'll get a little bit more aggressive with it just to speed it up <laughs> Now 
Now this blend here is really, really starting to darken up a little bit. It's starting to almost look like a natural cottontail. So we'll do just a little bit more. And you can do this with yarn, you can do this with wool, depending what you want to make. Um, one of my favorite dubbings I use is made out of camel hair. Um, I just like the, the characteristics that it creates. But you can just cut the pieces and grind them in there. They have a lot of guard hairs. You can hold the smaller hairs up and pick them longer hairs out. And for wet fly dubbing, because you don't want quite as long unless you're using a dubbing loop. So this is a little bit darker than before. So we're going to do one more. It's a little bit darker than before. So now I'm going to put a bunch of the black in here. We're going to make one just really dark. And I don't know how long it's been, but it's just a few minutes, which has took me a little bit longer than it normally would just because I'm explaining as I'm going. But you can do this with every color there is. So you can make every shade of every color there is and have boxes after boxes after boxes. I ordered these little boxes on Amazon and I think I got 20 of them for 12 bucks. And here you can see my next one is pretty dark of a brown. So I can close this and I can get this up close and you can see how it goes through every shade from white to a really, really dark blackish gray brown. Now I have a dubbing box that is absolutely full of all of my shades of tan, basically. And then you can just do different colors. So now let me clean this out real quick and I'm going to show you guys something that I like to do that's pretty handy. Um, so I'll just do it with this color. I'll just, I'll just make this bag. So what I do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set it on something. Hmm. Just use my desk and wipe it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this out. So I've got my dubbing just kind of spread out. And what this is, is silicone water guard. And the silicone water guard is really fast drying. It's just an aerosol product. And it's made to water treat tents, shoes, boots. It's a waterproofing agent. So what I'm going to do is just spray just a little bit of that on this fur. Or yarn whatever it is now and I'm gonna mix it all around and just kind of let it sit and then just kind of let it fluff up and air out and this is gonna dry completely dry you will not be able to tell that there's anything on there now that will not sink so what I have just done is I have made perfect dry fly treatment and a mess but I have made a perfect dry fly treatment. I'll let this sit for an hour, depending what the conditions are. You don't want it to feel wet, so you just let it sit until it doesn't feel wet anymore. And you can do this with any color that you make. So once you do that, you have a dry fly, and people are like, oh, the smell of this, the smell of that. It dries without an odor. I've caught thousands of fish with this. It does not make an odor or an issue. But it'll keep this to where it floats, so you don't need a fly dressing. I've used this on several different flies, different materials. I've used it as fly dressing actually at times and it works pretty good you can use fly dressing you can do whatever you can just make your flies with this normal and you can mix it up and just add your your fly treatment on there when you're out there fishing but I like to have a little bit that I know it is already dry so however long it's been just a few seconds a minute maybe maybe two max and that is already dry so if you do that, you can make yourself a complete box of dry fly dubbing as well. Now make sure and label that really good because that will repel water. So when you're trying to make streamers or stuff that you want underwater, it will struggle. You'll have to have a lot of weight to get it down. So basically that is what I do. And you can buy, like I'm fixing to make a dubbing box of neon colors. And you don't have to go buy a spool of every kind of yarn. This was like 6 or $7 at Walmart. 
and it's got every color of neon that you can imagine. So when I start making my trout and salmon flies and different stuff like that, I can have a whole box full of neon colors off of one spool. And I know these little spools, we went to Dollar Tree the other day and I bought some in different colors that I didn't have and they were the dollar 25 tree with inflation. So I got the different colors there. And today I'm gonna sit in here, I'm gonna make them. I think I've got 30 boxes that I need to make. I'm gonna make a bunch of stuff. I got some buddies coming out to go fishing and we're gonna get everything set up for it. So, so basically you can, this is all rabbit blend. You can make it straight, straight yarn or you can make it straight rabbit fur or any kind of fur that you have. The only thing with dubbing is you want it to be, I, I like less than half inch pieces. If I'm making dry fly, I want some really, really fine dubbing for dry flies. But if I'm fishing wet flies, I, I like them about a half inch tall so or half inch long. So you wanna make sure your fibers are that small. So whatever you're doing, if you're making it out of yarn, if you're making it out of fur, you wanna make sure that you're cutting it at that size. And the easiest way to do that with fur is to put a guard on, and I keep one right here, and you put a guard on your shears, and you can cut through the hair, and then that bottom section that's there is whatever depth you have this guard set at, and then you can take your scissors or you can take these off and cut it without them, and then you have a perfect whatever size that you want out of your furs, and then the, the yarn, just cut it in the lengths that you need and you're ready to go. And like I say, you cannot find, I've never heard of anybody else using the Scotch Guard like I do, but it's amazing stuff and it really, really, really helps. So I hope these ideas will help save you guys some money and, and build you guys a better kit and, and, and fly tying. I mean, let's get real guys. 90% of the hobby is finding cool stuff to make materials. And you know, I live in Oklahoma, it's hundred degrees today and it's almost October and it's too hot to fish as far as I'm concerned. So I do all of my fishing from basically mid-October till you know April is when I do 90% of my fishing. Now I do a lot of bass fishing and stuff like that in the summer, but I do a lot of fly tying when I can't go fishing. So on these days, if you live in a cold environment where it's freezing cold and stuff like that, this is where we're at. So, you know, you can go to your fly shops, you can go to your craft stores, you can go to your Walmart. If your wife is going to the store and you're tagging along and you're bored, start looking for materials, that's what I do. And there's unlimited supplies. If you can make it as a fur or a feather, you can take craft fur, you can take yarn, you can take any kind of material that there is and cut it down. You can blend it and have a half and half. You can run it whole, however you want to do it. But dubbing is super easy to make and you've seen how easy it is to, to tone the colors. So I hope this helps you guys and I appreciate you guys watching. We will have a video on dyeing tomorrow and I'm gonna to do some fly tying as well. So thank you guys again.